Nanya and his sister, Mrs. Makaleya Joseph, came down to my office one day and they opened up this concept to me. And I have to tell you that my initial reaction was one of wonderment. Uh, I didn't quite understand it. I'd never, I'd never heard of something like that before. And we hashed it over a couple of times. We got into it a little bit. And I needed a little bit of time to absorb it. But I was very, very impressed by what I heard. Our script writer, Mrs. Malkalea Josephs, really created a, an original story that fit the theme of OHEL clients. It really did. And when we talked about musical inspirations, let the journey begin. This really was a journey from the beginning of this film to the very end. Hi, my name is Dan Brody, and I played the part of Bernie Kaufman on uh, this wonderful shoot that we had that you just enjoyed. You know, tell you a little bit about Bernie. Bernie is, we're finding Bernie, the character, at a pivotal point in his life. Uh, here's a man who's, you know, achieved some success in business, but at the cost of both his family uh, relationships and also his spiritual growth. And what we're getting an opportunity to see is really two things. One of them is how Bernie meets a number of people along the way in his journey on his business trip to Eretz Yisrael. And what he's gathering from each of these individual people is not just pearls of wisdom, they're actually, actually planting seeds in his head and he's realizing from, from the growth of those seeds, to use the metaphor, um, he's realizing what is really important in life. So my role ended up being Bernie's boss. How's it going, Kaufman? It's great, actually. I was just working on some uh, projections, the numbers for, for next month, and things are, things are looking, they're looking up. They're looking good. Good, good. Well, you know, and bringing a little a bit more into it than just a boss-employee situation, um, I ended up giving Bernie a little bit of chizik before he went on his trip and reminding him about what the important priorities are in his life in terms of being in touch with his wife and children. And, of course, I spoke about my wife a little bit, who was actually my boss. But remember, success is in the process. It's the people you meet along the way, the lives that you change, and those that change yours for the better. Thank you. That's so poetic, sir, and, and like, and philosophical. You're, you're like a philosopher. Well, that's me. I'm a falafel server. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like my wife, Brookie, always reminds me, and she's right. You have to work hard to be successful, but Bernie, you have to remember to call your wife and kids every once in a while, too. Have a good trip, and remember to keep an open mind along the way. And then, of course, there was the role of Leonard, who is Bernie's assistant, ably played by Mich Kohn, who was just hysterical. And that's just Mich. That's the way he does stuff. Uh, he cracked me up, and I think he cracked everybody else up, and he was just terrific, and lended a, a bit of levity to the production. A little bit. Leonard is a very serious person who drive the emotional part of this production through from beginning to end. Without you, there And without be... Leonard, there would be no oh hell. <laughs> okay, excellent. Now, how did you prepare to, for today's role? What, uh, find your Not here? enough. Mm. You want to know how I prepared for this? I was thinking of Mr. Kleinman. And, <laughs> and Rabbi Krohn. And between the two of them, that's how I came up with Leonard. If you don't mind my saying, you need to get involved in a little bit of Tai Chi. You've been too stressed out lately. I have a friend who has his cousin who knows a guy in shul. After the screenplay was written, we set out to cast the film. We were, frankly, very concerned with the casting. To be able to get a troupe of actors that were going to be of the caliber that we needed and be able to relate to an Orthodox Jewish audience that was something that we weren't convinced that we necessarily were going to pull off. But we set out to uh, create the little bios of our different characters, and we put it into the secular publications and the From Outlets and Nachum Siegel uh, you know, advertised on the radio that people could send in their resumes and headshots. I wasn't ready for this, but within 48 hours, we had 500 resumes and headshots for those characters that we needed to film. Our casting call was in a studio in Manhattan, and we started the day, first thing in the morning, we went all the way to the, into the evening to, to listen to these uh, auditions. The one line that sticks out in my mind from that day is all these guys who were trying to audition for the part of the barista who works in the coffee shop, and they would say, Rabbi Krohn, can I get you the usual? Rabbi Krohn, can I get you the usual? Hey, Rabbi Krohn, can I get you the usual? Rabbi Krohn! 
Can I get you the usual? Rabbi Crohn! Can I get you the usual? Rabbi Crohn! Okay, can I get you the usual? Oh, Rabbi Crohn! Can I get you the usual? Oh, hey, Rabbi Crohn! Hey, can I get you the usual? Rabbi Crohn! Can I get you the usual? Rabbi Crohn! Can I get you the usual? Rabbi Crohn! Can I get you the usual? Rabbi Khan! Can I get you the usual? Of course! Sure thing, Rabbi. After the casting was complete, we set out to create our storyboards. The storyboards were enormously helpful in giving us a visualization of what these actual shots would look like. After we finished shooting the scene with Bernie in the office with Leonard, that scene took us a little longer than we thought. It was a it was a difficult scene to film, and the truth is, if you study it carefully, you'll notice that there was no, we had to shoot the entire scene in two different intervals because we couldn't put the camera behind Dan Brody playing Bernie. There was just no room to have a multi-camera shoot, so we had to actually move all the furniture and shoot it from another angle, and in the edit, we kind of assembled it. After we were finished, I think it was about 1 or 2 p.m., we had to leave at 5 p.m. to catch the flight at JFK to fly to Eretz Yisrael. It's kind of ironic, we're filming a scene about a guy who's running off to the airport to go to Israel, but that was us. We actually, the, the acting troupe, we had to go to Israel in our car, which was actually the prop car that Antoine the driver was driving. That was the car that was going to drive us to JFK. But we only had like two and a half hours to shoot this scene, and the last scene took us six or seven hours to shoot. So uh, we just had to do it, we had to make it happen. So John, our DP, started, he put on his shirt like Lawrence of Arabia because it was so hot he needed to wear it like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and we got out there and we just started shooting handheld in order to make it happen. The problem that we didn't anticipate was it was the day that the ice cream company decided to have their truck go around the block every 10 minutes. And there was an airplane flying overhead every 12 or 15 minutes. And it was constantly ruining our set. Sometimes we had to actually take takes that had made it into the film that had some of these extraneous noises. I mean, what could we do? But it was a real challenge keeping up with all that. So, Yerachmil Nehemiah.